Hey guys, welcome to the newly rebranded Card Corner. It is now Collectibles Corner, and one of the things we are going to do on Collectibles Corner is look back through collectibles from our childhood. And today, the thing we are talking about is this game, Monster in My Pocket. Now, this is the Monster Showdown box that everything is in. Uh, this was a really cool game from when I was young. I don't think it was particularly big, but it was particularly cool. Now, this game did have some really cool miniatures in it, but it wasn't really a miniatures game. In fact, it was more of a card game why the fuck do we even bother with this rebrand but yeah i digressed it was the miniatures that uh, sort of drew me into this game i think i was young and in york one day and i sort of went running down to the toy aisle and saw the figure mad scientist and i was like that's a really cool dude memorized what it was called gave it a google when i got home and i was hooked now i never actually played these in school or anything so i have absolutely no idea how popular these were in fact I don't really know how you'd transport these to school. I mean, despite them being monsters in your pocket, it's going to be uncomfortable as fuck carrying these around in your school trousers. Right, I'm off to the park to play monsters in my pocket with Liam. I suppose if you were in primary school, I mean, you could slip these into your book bag quite easily. Doesn't fucking matter. Every game like this got banned in schools. I mean... I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want these cool dudes being confiscated. I mean, this guy's rare. It's exclusive to this box. This one time when I was in year two, a load of Pokemon stacks fell out of my pocket. And they got handed into one of the teachers, but I was too scared to ask for them back. So, like, yeah, I wasn't even in trouble. They didn't even get taken off me. I just dropped them. And I was still too scared of the teacher to ask for them back. So, yeah, I wouldn't really want these getting taken off me. Pokemon stacks, that's another thing I'm going to do a video on. Anyway, Miss Fry it, if you're out there, I want the stacks back. Uh, this is kind of, it kind of comes in like a plaggy arena. I mean, it's, it's kind of, ooh, stuff in there. It's kind of Beyblade style, sort of, just plastic arena. It's kind of, this is like a cover on it at least, but, you know, it's kind of just shitty plastic, really. Like a kid isn't going to fucking wreck fuck out of this. So, how the game worked was, essentially, you have, um, you actually get a lot of cards that tell you how the game worked. But, essentially, you have a creature, so, for example, Gremlin, and you would play this against your opponent's card. So, for example, the monster. So, what you would do is you would use this, normally you just hold the cards together, but in this instance, you would use the incredibly convenient card holder right here in the middle of the showdown area and you will put the cards back to back like so and then place them in the card holder because it was too difficult because once you've already placed them back to back it was too difficult to uh, to hold on to the cards now as you can see once in the holder they have to kind of sit out to the side for their e in to even be readable but essentially it's a game of top trumps from there you choose you compare your elements, and if you have if your element beats your opponent's element, so for example, fire beats earth, so this player would get to choose which of these stats they're going to compare. And then the winner, I believe, got, I don't know, a party thrown in his honour. But it wasn't all just down to the numbers on the card. This is where the miniatures come in. Because if we take a card, if we take this Grim Reaper miniature, and this caved-in bear head skull, caved-in bear skull light, you could uncover a secret hidden number on the figurine. Unless it was, like, incredibly bright during the day and the light just didn't show up at all. There's a six on the Grim Reaper somewhere in there. And then the chosen stat would be increased. Oh, my pup. My puppy's having a nightmare. So really, you only lost if your bonus wasn't better than your opponent's. If your card was garbage, you lost anyway. But yeah, it was yeah, it was kind of top trumps, but I just tried to make it a little bit more complicated. I think the bonuses were different on different figures. So like you could just like you could just knuckle the nerdy kid in school to give you all of their best fucking bonuses because if you didn't have the figure, they're in included in this set were cards that you didn't actually have. So for example, in fact, there's multiple copies of the same cards in here because we already had them. Try to think of an example of someone. 
Okay, so there's not many of them we didn't have, but you did get a couple where you didn't actually have the miniatures for them. So that kind of sucked because then, you know, you didn't have the bonus. This guy, actually, this guy, this is the mad scientist I was talking about a minute ago. This guy was OP as fuck, right? Because his stats were, like, way better than all of his, all, all the other characters. But then he also has, like, an 8 as a bonus. So, like, you know, he is, like far and away stronger than everybody else i don't even know why a mad scientist is so good like he's literally physically strongest i think i went as this guy for halloween one year just like a generic mad scientist with like green trousers my dad's a nurse so you know he had like the the overcoats and stuff fucking swamp me because i was about fucking probably about eight years old but yeah anyway i think this is a cool idea is you know having the information on the back of the card as well as the front um, but ultimately this little stand is just fucking pointless man I mean at the end of the day you could just literally fucking read it out you know like it actually is top trumps I nearly stole the back of the card idea for my first world war card game so you knew how much things cost without having to reveal what the card was uh, I still may but yeah it was a boring game as well because like I say it was just top trumps so like I mean these miniatures are cool as fuck but yeah they only go so far I mean they it would be nice to use these for something, they're really cool to be honest. And like I say, you also got a bunch of extra cards, which was cool to get the cards you didn't have, but with no fucking bonuses for them, it was it was useless. And like I say, it was, it, it's kind of like Dice Masters if you already have the card, like where you need to get multiples of the dice to play it, but you don't need multiples of the card, because you got multiples of the same fucking card. Look, there's two ogres. And they're just fucking irrelevant fucking cards, you know, just fucking unnecessary useless duplicate cards uh, that you've got no use for that could have just remained as a tree you know but yeah anyway this is you know this is a pretty cool game in terms of the miniatures the game itself won't great but yeah i think i had one game of this and me and my friend liam were just like yeah this sucks let's not play this anymore let's take a look at some of the fucking other figures this guy is cool as fuck man look at him he is metal as fuck on the box you've got one kid that's like wow look at how fucking cool all these characters are and then you've got the other kid that's kind of just like i'm going to crush your skull in with a mallet on the back of the box we can see the habitats that they all that they all lived in not all of them made an awful lot of sense like for example the vampirus and the vampire being in humanoids and maniacs rather than the dead and the fact that the vampire and the vampirus aren't from the same habitat but yeah, this was kind of cool as well, because you kind of be like, all of these groups were pretty cool. So yeah, you, you kind of just wanted them all. I don't think I have these four. I think I only have Siren and Invisible Man from that entire section. So that's, that's grim. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed learning about Monster in My Pocket.